shout out to the Mount Burnett Observatory. Thanks for the t-shirt, thanks for coming to Star Stuff, and shout out to Neil Creek as well, an astrophotographer from there, really accomplished. Uh, you should check his work out. So what has the space program ever done for us, besides maybe Velcro and Tang and life-saving medicines? You might not realize this, but the Hubble Space Telescope is responsible for one of the processes in our astro processing software called Drizzle. It's because of the shortcomings on the camera, the undersampling on the Hubble Space Telescope used for the deep field images, that a team of developers came up with an algorithm to infer the missing pixels and actually upscale the image and without losing detail. Drizzle is fantastic. You can use Drizzle in Astro Pixel Processor, in Deep Sky Stacker, in Nebulosity, and of course I'll be using PixInsight because I've got way too much money. That was a joke. I'm broke. Partly because of PixInsight. Stick around and I'll show you how Drizzle works and how you can get the best out of your images. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Drizzle was developed by a couple of researchers because the images coming back from Hubble were undersampled. That means that if you zoom into the stars, they're quite jagged and blocky. However, there is a trick they realized that you can use if you dither your images. If you haven't seen my video on dithering, be sure to check it out. So as long as your image is undersampled and you've dithered, you can use this tool to essentially upscale your image. Now, when we're taking astro photos, the cameras that we typically use don't have very small pixels. DSLRs generally do, and they have a great big resolution. But most astro cameras, CCDs, and even CMOS have a quite a small resolution. So when we want to blow up the images on big posters and things like that, we really don't have the resolution to do that. So in order to upscale the image, you can upscale the image in a tool like Photoshop and just increase it, and it just guesses what, the, what should be in those pixels or we can use the drizzle tool. As you dither your image, so at a sub-pixel level, it's bouncing the image around a little bit as it's taking shots. And then as the brightness changes in the jagged areas between these pixels, the algorithm can actually make an assumption on what the correct value of the extra pixels it adds in will be. Then we end up with a much larger image than the camera is capable of, but we don't lose that detailing at a blurry mess at the end of it. Okay, we're going to drizzle some files. Here is some data I got on Thor's helmet. You can see that Thor is a pretty small target. I've calibrated the images and now I'm going to star align them. Select here, I usually select something sort of in the middle. And we've got all of our exposures here ready to align. Uh, and we want to tick this box that says generate drizzle data. This will create some files that we use afterwards to actually do the drizzling. So let's go ahead and apply this. Okay, so now that all our images are aligned, um, this is not part of the drizzle tutorial, but you always want to blink your files. And we'll set the loop up so it's running. We can go looking for UFOs. Yes, you should always blink your data because you never know when you might find an unidentified flying object. Well, I couldn't find any UFOs, so we're going to go straight into the stacking here. Uh, so I will add my registered and calibrated files, underscore C, underscore R. And here's the difference for drizzling. You need to add the drizzle files as well. So we'll go in here and add the drizzle files. So now you can see we can select all those RDZ files. So you'll see they're in there with a parentheses D so I'm going to stack these now and we'll see what we get and you'll see now after it's done the integration it's um, updating the drizzle files I forgot to mention you do have to have this tick here for generate drizzle data and we can see in the rejection that it's rejected a bunch of stuff which is great we're just going to close those and in our integration here if I do the atomic auto stretch that's pretty good. We've got those dust motes as I expected. That's a nice smooth clear image, um, but still pretty small. 
uh, at one to one it's like that which can be cleaned up and sharpened and all that as we keep going with our processing but it's still pretty small and I'd love to see this bigger so now we do our drizzle so we're going to open up the drizzle integration tool and we're going to add the DRZ files that we just got from that last step and we're just going to apply a global drizzle I've got the scale set here at 2 and the drop shrink around 1 and we just apply global Two thousand years later. Oh my god, that took a long time. You definitely want to make sure you uh, take your coffee break while it's drizzling. And here's our drizzled one. You can see it's that's one to three, and this is one to five. If I go zoom in one to one, you can see suddenly this target is huge. In fact, I'll just zoom out a bit, so you can see it's essentially quadrupled in size. Uh, which is fantastic. We've got a lot more leeway to do some processing and cropping. Now I should mention that in order for this to work you need to have dithered in the first place. So go watch my video about dithering and why you should always do it. And then the algorithm can work out better how to enlarge the image. You can see that this star is a little undersampled because it's blocky. Now it's not badly undersampled. I've had to zoom in 6 to 1 in order to see this undersampling. It's not something you'd normally see but it's this sort of effect that will allow you to then uh, upscale the image with drizzling. You can see the stars are a lot smoother now. A lot more data has been inferred from that drizzle. But that's drizzling in a nutshell. It takes a long time but I think the results worth it. So if you have the patience definitely drizzle your data. That's it for this very quick episode of Star Stuff today. If you post any images on social media where I've helped you or one of my videos has helped you or you use drizzle for the first time please tag me in your image. I'd love to see what you do. Thanks for everyone who has been tagging me in their images. I love to see them and I love to know that I've helped you in some way. I'll try to feature a few in this outro. Thanks to all my Instagram followers for voting on whether or not I should get a haircut. The result was so close. Certain countries might choose to leave the European Union over a vote this close, but I'm not going to take that chance with my hair. And remember, everything is meaningless, and I'll see you at NIFA, New York shortly. Yeah.